during Woodrow Wilson's first four years in office, this is usually considered the culmination of the entire progressive movement. And when you hear people that don't know anything about the progress, progressive era, they usually associate Wilson with progressivism. But that is uh, not a fair or accurate statement. He probably gets the, he prob people usually consider him responsible for it, probably because today the Democrat, the Democratic Party is usually considered the party of reform. And so people's mind just want to make that connection. But during his administration, he will get everything he called for passed in the new freedom. And then he will go further and he'll pass a lot of the things that Teddy Roosevelt had called for. So a lot of what he does will be inspired by Teddy Roosevelt. And let me give you some, let me give you the specifics. First and foremost, one of the first things he did was get a tariff passed that actually lowered tariff duties. This is the first time tariffs were lowered since, uh, before the Civil War. So it had been you know, more than 50 years. And obviously Democrats had called for this a long time and he deserves a lot of credit for it too. He actually went to Congress and told Congress why they needed to. And then he went to the public and told the public why you need to put pressure on your senators for uh, lowering the tariff. And so what we'll get is the Underwood Simmons tariff, which actually lowers tariff duties. Again, so first part of new freedom, he'll get passed. Now, when tariff duties are lowered in 1913, obviously, uh, federal government has to make money somewhere. So the number one source of federal government revenue up until 1913 is the tariff. The same time the Underwood Simmons tariff is passed, we will also pass the first progressive income tax uh, in a time of peace in U.S. history. We had passed the 16th Amendment that created the progressive income tax, allowed for the creation of it. And here's how weird the past was. The guy that introduced the legislation for the progressive income tax, a guy named John Nance Garner, he'll be vice president under FDR and he was a Texan. So if you can imagine a Texas, a Texan introducing legislation for first progressive income tax. Um, and the reason he did it is because the level of wealth that this affected are mostly people in the Northeast. It didn't affect very many Texans at all. So first progressive income tax since this time, this is the tax that most Americans focus on when they are complaining about taxes or talking, it's usually complaining about taxes, it's the progressive income tax. So this is when that changes and we will not talk about tariffs a whole lot more in the rest of the semester. So Wilson's one for one, he moved on then to second part, creating, new, creating a new banking and monetary system. The Federal Reserve Act, 1913 creates our federal federal reserve system and this is super complicated because what this does is reforms the entire banking and monetary system of the united states we have not had a central bank since jackson killed the second bank of the united states remember alexander hamilton was the first person to call for this and so the idea had been around for more than way well more than 100 years uh, but we have not had a central bank for, at this point, it was like 70 years. Um, and this is super complicated, but essentially it creates a Federal Reserve System. So at the very top, you have the Federal Reserve uh, Board of Governors. It's nine men. And then you have 12 reserve districts. So it's true to this day. There are federal 12 Federal Reserve districts. One of the Federal Reserve districts, 11, is... Uh, centered in Dallas and um, every one of those Federal Reserve districts 
oversees all banking done in their region. So to make a very complicated system very short, what this is is the uh, federal regulation essentially of the entire banking system. So the banking system is still privately owned, but now the federal government regulates the entire thing. And there are a lot of people that think we should get rid of the Federal Reserve, and that is just insane. You have, you have to not know what it was like without a Federal Reserve to think that's a good idea. Every advanced nation in the, econ in the world has, with an advanced economy has some sort of central banking system because you just you need it. And feel free to come at me. Uh, I stand by that statement and I have a lot of history and evidence to back it up. But all you have to know is this stabilizes the bank. It stabilizes the banking and monetary system more than it was without it. It's not perfect, but it brings more stability and uh, including to the amount of the money in circulation and the reliability of the money. So Wilson is now two for two. He will then go on to get the third part of his new freedom pass, the Clayton Antitrust Act. This greatly expanded the power of the Sherman Antitrust Act. Remember that breaks up monopolies based on uh, that phrase. Any, it makes it illegal anything in restraint of trade or commerce. The Clayton Antitrust Act strengthened the Sherman Antitrust Act. So like with the ICC, regulatory agencies have, uh, their power has to be expanded over time. And this is what Wilson was calling for. Now, it is super complicated, but essentially they started trying to list everything that is considered in restraint of trade that a business can do. What is the fundamental flaw of that? cannot list everything that businesses are going to do or that will do in the future. They will do in the future. So listing everything that is in restraint of trade, it's impossible because uh, businesses find a way around regulations and laws. So while the Clayton Antitrust Act was being passed, Wilson will change directions. So now he got all three of the things that he said needed to be done in order to create a more equitable, fair system. And he had said that once these things are passed, that's all you need to do. It'll increase competition and then the world, or, and then it'll deal with all problems. But he will change. In the midst of doing this, he'll change uh, for two big reasons. One is political. When the Republicans were divided, he had a chance of winning, but as he found out in 1914, it's a midterm election year. So, you know, the, the entire House of Representatives and one third of the Senate are, are changed. When the Republicans are unified, they had the overwhelming advantage and they just swept uh, Congress. So he realized if he was going to run again in 1916, then he had to change directions. So there was part of it was political, but to his credit, and he made this very clear, uh, he just realized Roosevelt had been right. There needed to be regulations in place. There needed to be protections in place for individuals and for businesses, and there needed to be more regulation. So that same year, with his backing, the Federal Trade Commission Act is passed. The Federal Trade Commission Act creates the Federal Trade Commission, which we still have to this day. Federal Trade Commission, that is who we who individuals go to when there are unfair business practices. It essentially takes the ICC and applies it to all businesses. It is a five-man commission to this to this day. It's a five-man commission, and they regulate all and oversee all businesses. Uh, it, there's a stipulation that only three can be from the same party. So uh, it tries to deal with the issue of party differences and Federal Trade Commission it, to this day, it's really important. Like, for example, last year, uh, 
2023, the FTC announced that it uh, there was $10 billion in scams committed by uh, to individual citizens in the United States. And the FTC's job is to investigate those. So it, it plays a very important role in society, to, in the economy today. He also, and this was very controversial, appointed Louis Brandeis to the Supreme Court. Now, Louis Brandeis, uh, you can tell a lot about a president by who they, who they appoint to the Supreme Court, and this was incredibly controversial uh, partly because Brandeis, he was known to be a lawyer that specialized in uh, labor laws or trying to protect workers and um, supporting child labor laws, minimum wage laws. So he, he was a lawyer that was known for social justice and worker rights. Uh, so that was that. That's something that made him different. But what made him really controversial is he was a Jew and. That was very controversial at the time. He will also put his backing behind two pieces of legislation that are social justice that Roosevelt had explicitly called for with new freedom. First, the Keaton Owen Child Labor Act. This prohibits from interstate commerce any good that is manufactured by children. So if you are a company that trades over state lines and you hire anyone below the age of 14, you cannot sell your goods over state lines. So if you are a small business that is just in one state, you can use labor below the age of 14. Uh, but if you are engaged in interstate commerce, you can't. So keep knowing Child Labor Act, it outlaws child labor. Now, this will be repealed, or the Supreme Court will rule this, rule this unconstitutional in the 1920s, but Wilson uh, gets credit for it being passed. He also got passed the Adamson Act. This establishes the eight hour workday. And it said for any amount of time over eight hours, companies must pay time and a half. So Adamson Act, it establishes the eight hour workday. It also called for the government to investigate the working condition of railroad workers, because railroad workers had it especially bad. So he established the eight-hour workdays. This also will be repealed. Both child labor and the eight-hour workday will not be uh, reinstated fully back until 1938. And, uh, but obviously, FTC, Child Labor Act, Adamson Act, those are all part of Roosevelt's New Deal. Now, um, Wilson wanted to go further in terms of progressivism, in terms of domestic policy, but by 1916, Americans weren't interested in uh, domestic politics. They were interested in World War I. And so Woodrow Wilson, he will have to run in 1916 on the war, and he will run on peace, saying uh, he will not bring Americans into war. This was super popular and Americans loved it. Uh, he wins in November 1916. And then the United States enters World War II in April of 1917. But we will talk about that later.